and great. Welcome to Digital Asset News, to get top stories in crypto and bring out a bite-sized pieces today, just as the thumbnail suggests, even though everybody's talking about the Federal Reserve and the announcement made by Jerome Powell, there is a much bigger issue at large and I need to bring it to your attention. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm gonna do. Before we get into that, let's take a look at the crypto and traditional markets. We're also gonna take a look at uh, the announcement yesterday and uh, what I learned from the meetup we had here in Puerto Rico. And I'm not gonna spend a great deal of time on the announcement. Everybody knows what was said. And if you don't, I'll just briefly skim over it. But again, the bigger issue is this bill called America Competes. And it's what's really important. It kind of seems like things are being uh, blown out of proportion for other parts when the real important aspects are right in front of us. Also, we'll take a look at uh, looking forward, uh, Picasso teaching the future and Vladimir Putin from Russia, who is uh, actually becoming very pro Bitcoin. And lastly, we'll take a look at our, do a little Q&A for the five questions that you guys got. And we'll go over all that stuff. So before we go on, let's make sure that uh, the audio is looking pretty good and we're OK. And uh, we'll go from that. Let's see. Kevin, love your videos. Great. NASDAQ going down. Exactly. Uh, Bitcoin is done. No, it's not done. I'm going to explain that why. So it looks like we're doing OK with the audio and the video. Let's jump into a little bit of what is happening today. So first, of course, let's take a look at the market, right? Why not? Just to see where we are. And we're down 3%. And why are we down 3%? Pfft, anybody's guess, because it wasn't like the announcement was anything dramatic yesterday. It wasn't like Jerome Powell said, hey, we're going to drop, uh, you know, three points. No, he didn't even say anything. So we're going to just kind of let everything go until March. So everybody's like, OK. And then there was a huge pump. And then everything just kind of started to slowly drop down. Again, I think we're taking the eye off the prize. So here's what we got. Last 24 hours, Bitcoin down 3.4. Ethereum, 5.7. Tether, nah, no one's care. Binance coin, 6.3 for Solana, 3.6. Everything's down across the board. Last hour is looking pretty good. Not that that's a big thing. Uh, but remember, over the seven day and over the last month or so, that's the big story. So yes, um, you can take the smallest of small wins if you're a, a, a really uh, sharp trader for the last hour. You're up 5%, great. But really in the grand scheme of things, it really is what's going on in the grand uh, finality of time. And then, unfortunately, since we're so uh, attached to the hip, let's take a look at what's going on S&P 500. Uh, it is now 11.45 here in Puerto Rico, which means that's 10.45 roughly in uh, New York or Eastern Standard Time where the markets have opened up about an hour or so. And it opened up pretty good and everything, it, it actually rose. And then of course, I think people have taken profits and boom, it goes down again. That's uh, S&P 500, but let's zoom out, see how we're doing. Not too hot. One month, not so great. Six month, eh, about the same. And then over a, a year time frame, doing pretty good actually, S&P 500. So when in doubt, zoom out. And then of course the NASDAQ, which is what I think is uh, correlated more closely to Bitcoin and crypto. The last day, I mean, today it's looking pretty good. I mean, it started off pretty high, went up, and then of course it's falling down because people taking profits or whatever else, which is what, not investment uh, advice, just investment opinion. If you're gonna take, uh, if you're gonna invest and you want a dollar cost average in, it's also important to take a little profits along the way. Nobody ever went broke taking profits. And uh, that also corresponds to the traditional market. Five days, eh, one month, not so good. Six month, okay, now uh, looking pretty bad. But again, if we zoom out over a year, over five years, still doing pretty darn good in the traditional market. And uh, this is what gets to me. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to spend much time on this because you see this, this story right here, right here. Let me pull this up. It says, why is the stock market dropping? The Fed's message was scarier than predicted. And I'm not going to go over this in great detail. Uh, this is from uh, Veterans. And uh, it says, Dow drops as Powell talks. And the whole reason why they're thinking that this went down is because of this. Andrew Brenner of Nat Alliance Securities blamed the decline on Chairman Jerome Powell's tone of voice. Powell sounded much more hawkish in the press conference. And Treasury's hit and equities giving back gains. So I'm just, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, really? Are we, are people in the traditional space, I don't want to say weak, but that scared that the tone of somebody's voice is going to drop everything. I mean, I understand, you know, you have to protect yourself and everything else. But in all honesty, every time I I, I talk to uh, my brothers because they're in the traditional space, I'm just like, you guys are that, 
you guys sell at that, uh, you know, on, on those points, like 0.5 and 1.5 and 2%, and you don't want to just keep going in because over time, they're like, oh, yeah, I mean, that's just how it's, how it's done. I'm like, really? That's, that's insane. 2%, that just happened uh, four hours ago. I could care less. But uh, again, I think it's just a different mindset and just seeing yourself like, where do you want to be? Like, are, you, are we here for the short term? Are we here for the long, grandiose time frame? It just boggles. It boggles my mind because I, I never was in the traditional space. I, when I got into investing, first of all, it was all real estate. So that was a very long term play. And the second thing was I never really got into stocks or equities. I did buy a couple along the way, but I didn't really care that much. Uh, Tesla and Google because I like those companies. But besides that, I just thought, you know what, uh, you know, crypto, it's, it's like a proving ground. If you can handle 50% swings in a couple of weeks, you can handle anything. But that's all we have. And uh, there is just a little bit of good news I will bring up uh, quickly. And that is that for the, for the traditional space, uh, Q4 GDP was just released and the U.S. economy expanded at almost 7%. This just came out like an hour ago or so. So GDP quarter over quarter annualized, 6.9 versus 5.5, but they expected 2.3. That's pretty good. Personal consumption, 3.3 versus 3.4. They expected two. And core personal consumption expenditures, 4.9 hours, 4.9. All it really says is that, look, growth is going on. Things are going good. So if that happens, if that happens for the Fed, the Fed's going to look like, okay, well, if everything's going pretty well, we're probably going to raise a little bit of rates because it looks like the economy is doing okay. Now, what's going to happen in Q1? Uh, or Q2 2022, as far as Q1, it's anybody's guess. But this, again, takes me to my next point, which is the announcement yesterday uh, and what I learned from the meetup. Whoops, I already talked about that, sorry. What I learned from the meetup was this, and then we'll get into uh, America Competes, and which is the big, which is the way bigger deal. So yesterday, we had a meetup at this great place, San Juan Smokehouse, it was fantastic. The baking was great. I didn't have the brisket, but it looked good. And I met a bunch of people. Uh, great. I mean, interesting, interesting folks came out and said, hi, I've never met you. You know, like I, I met James Brown. That was great. <laughs> James Brown. I met uh, a lady named Luna who works for a crypto uh, company. I met Steven, who's the owner. I met Alex. Uh, I met just a, a bunch of uh, people. Efrain came back around. My friend uh, uh, Big E was there. So it was just a great time. When I learned, there was a, a couple, there's a couple, one guy there in particular. And he had a good, pretty good story. He's like, look, man, he goes, I've been in Bitcoin since uh, Bitcoin. I was around when it went from 30 bucks to three bucks. And I was around when it went from a thousand to like a hundred. I was around when it went from 20,000 down to 5,000. And I was around when it went from 69 to whatever it is today. And he said, I really don't care what it is. He goes, because if you just look at this, just what I said, things just go up. And he goes, I know what's going to happen over time. I can't tell you what's going to happen uh, right here, but I can tell you over time it's going to do pretty well. And I was like, wow. So that's his investment advice. That's not what I said. That's just a gentleman that I met yesterday and it made a lot of sense to me. So when what I learned from that yesterday is the same thing I've always been thinking. Just time in the market is a lot better than timing the market. I also met somebody who had a different opinion. And I, and I like to, this is the whole, you can't get this unless you go and meet people. And he's like, look, he goes, I was big into Bitcoin Ethereum and I sold it all. And now what I got is just a bunch of S coins and I'm rolling into them. And he showed me his portfolio. And it, was, uh, it was a good solid seven figures. And I was like, wow. He said, look, he goes, Bitcoin could double. He goes, that's going to be kind of tough. But these ones could double, triple, quadruple. And I'm really in the money. And I'm like, yes. And I, and I agree with him to a point. But there's going to be some, and we both agreed, that some of these are just going to zero. That's just how it is. And you can do that route. But that's investment opinion, investment advice. You can go that route and put in a bunch of S coins and not the blue chips, but it's risky. So if you want to do that, go right ahead. And you could make a ton of money, but you got to understand that uh, a lot of those are going to zero. And uh, maybe they could quadruple 10x, 100x over time. But the basic principle was the same. He said, I don't know how long this is going to take. But I know it's going to be a long journey. And that's the thing. That's what it really came down to. So what I learned, again, is just the basic principle is time in the market better than timing. Let's get into what really matters. Because all that stuff we just talked about does not matter unless we combat this little issue called America Competes. And I'll talk about it real quick. I'll talk about what Charles said. And we're going to paraphrase what he said here. 
then I'm going to get to tell you like how we can combat this in specific ways. If you're in the U S I'll get to all that stuff. Cause I don't want to just talk about it. We need to have action. So this is why it's so important. We talk about this. So there's a new bill would hand treasury treasury secretary Yellen blank check to ban crypto at exchanges. Let me let that sink into you uh, to ban crypto at the exchanges. And it's not like, it's, well, we're going to go through, the, through a due process and have to do all these things and jump through hoops and, and legalities and, and listen to the people. No, they're like, we can ban crypto at exchanges if this law passes. That's why it's important. And this is not just for crypto. Provision is the American Pizza Act would allow Treasury to secretly, I love those words, secretly and government, prohibit any kind of transaction it deems a concern without any public notice or input. Pretty draconian. So authority for the so-called special measures, the first four allow the Secretary of the Treasury to direct financial institutions to engage in extraordinary surveillance and record keeping about their customers' transaction. Think about this, every detail you've done, they're gonna know. And the fifth allows the Secretary of the Treasury to direct financial institutions to prohibit their customers from transacting at all. Think of this, you wake up, you're like, I'd like to pay my bills today, well, you can't pay your bills because we had some suspicious activity and you're frozen. So good luck getting your money out, paying your bills or feeding your kids. I don't want to make it sound that bad, but I mean, eh, hey, it is what it is. Also, to finish up, I like examples. Examples make sense to me. For example, if the Secretary of the Treasury deems that either A, the Netherlands, or B, a Dutch crypto exchange, C, all crypto transactions validated by a miner outside the U.S., or D, all non-custodial wallets are of primary money laundering concern, and she can swiftly make it illegal for any US financial institutions, regulated crypto exchanges from maintaining accounts for customers involving those concerns, i.e. wipe them out. The proposed language in the American Competes Act would remove all formal controls, time limits, and public notice requirements. <laughs> I'm not getting you, this is real. From the Im imposition of these draconian measures that eliminates the notice and comment process. And uh, I'm gonna link this, I linked this in the description so you could check it out. It's a pretty great, scary read if you wanna go over it. But as soon as this came out, Charles Hoskinson, project leader there over there at IOHK, Cardano, ADA, came out with this, it's a really good 13 minute video. I guarantee, I, would, I think I linked it in the, in the uh, description, maybe I didn't, but uh, you can search for it, America Competes, and he's like the first video that comes up. And uh, I will say this, whether you like Cardano, I like Cardano, I like what they're doing, or you hate Cardano, you hate Charles, you got to tip your hat to this guy for being so Johnny on the spot and really rallying the troops for getting it out there. It's a great, it's a great one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I just want you to listen just to this. It's like 56 seconds and I, I, I'm not going to blow it up. I'm just going to have you listen to the audio. Okay. So let me do that. Let me remove this. Let me share my screen in a specific way so you can actually hear it. Stop screen. Brave tab. This is it. Okay. And you should be able to hear this audio. So let me play this. Let me know if you can hear it. And... You know, I was very diplomatic with the infrastructure bill. We called senators. We said, hey, let's get around. Then we got Shelby. Now they're just, just throwing it in there. And why would Jim do this? Well, you know, here's this Wikipedia page, for what that's worth. Let's look through. He went to Harvard. Okay. He spent some time in Lima. All right. You know, got to, went to Oxford. Oh, that's good. Oh, here we go. 1995, he has begun working at Goldman Sachs as a banker in Latin America, New York, and eventually promoted to vice president. Ah, he's part of the vampire squid. One of the new Democrat coalition chills that came in from Connecticut's 4th Congressional District and takes orders from the banking lobby. There you go. That's where the money came from. Okay, I had, I, okay, I added that part in. But you, you understand where we're going here. So if you want to take a, take a quick... Uh, gander at that one. I will uh, put that into the description. And again, if you can't find it, it's uh, just uh, America Competes, <laughs> dumpster fire. And it's one of those things. So let's talk about real quick. 
about how to compete with or not compete with that, how to uh, combat that. So it's great if we talk about it and we all get, you know, we exchange ideas and everything else, but it does absolutely nothing unless we take action. Here's how you do that. So there is a link in the description and it's house.gov representatives. First, it has to go to the house and get passed, probably will. Then it has to go through uh, your senators to get passed in that location, as far as your senators go. So the house has to pass it first, then the senator. So if you just wanna go over there first to figure out who you are uh, represented by, enter your zip code right here, find your rep by zip and it'll take it right there. Also, that's good to get the, the ball rolling. Just tell them that, hey, this uh, American Pete's, this one provision is awful for crypto and also for the banking sector at large because they can spy on me, do everything they want to and shut down my bank account. I don't want that. I don't live in a communist country. <laughs> Let me know what you think about that in the comments. But you can do that. And then also for senators, you can choose your state, whatever state you're at. And like, like this one, I don't know who this is, Barrasso, Wyoming, great. It'll take you right to uh, their webpage and you can contact them and say, hey, this is awful. Please vote against this and here's why. And just like what I talked about. So if you could do those two things like I've already done, that would be fantastic. So that's what we have. And again, this is, uh, these things are a little bit more important than Jerome Powell coming out and going, you know, maybe I'm gonna raise some rates. If we don't cut this off, potentially, it could be a really big blow to crypto and digital assets. So. Let me just think about that in the comments section. Let's look forward though, huh? Let's give a little balance here because it's not, it can't be all negative 24 seven, 365. Here's some good stuff that's coming up. I think this is pretty good. So Picasso heirs are jumping on the NFT bandwagon. They're gonna auction tokens to be accompanied by music from John Legend and Nas. So before we go on, this is, the reason I picked this up is to show you why crypto is not going to go anywhere unless the government squashes it, like the thing we just talked about, it's because there's a lot of money moving around. Just follow the money. So check this out. Pablo Picasso's heirs recently announced they are selling 1,010 digital art pieces of one of his ceramic works. Great. No, he did that. A work that has never been seen publicly. Auction house Sotheby's will host an auction in March that will include a unique NFT. I think they mean NFTs because there's a thousand. I could be wrong as well as the actual ceramic bull. Great, this is another example of how technology takes over, right? No, not all of us can afford a Picasso ceramic bull. Let's just be honest. We're not multimillionaires, all of us, but we can, might be able to afford like an NFT or maybe get into a DAO and uh, get into that NFT or maybe get a DAO and, just, <laughs> and get the ceramic bull, it doesn't matter. The thing that I want you to focus on is why is Sotheby's doing this? Why are they, you know, why are they even putting this up? The reason is, is because the same reason why a bunch of different companies are getting into it and crypto is not going anywhere is because there's so much money being made. And NFTs generated $100 million in revenue for Sotheby's in 2021. And that's just taken off. So what do you think they're gonna keep doing later on? So I see this as pretty positive news of where things are going. Also, I found this little gem. Uh, this was, was 5,000 role models, but this was, it's an example of how great it is when a city like Miami, uh, Mayor Suarez gets together and says, you know what, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna teach kids how to use crypto by giving them crypto. And we're not just giving them a little bit of crypto, we're gonna give them a thousand dollars worth of crypto. That's exactly what he did in this video. And uh, if you follow me over, if you follow me over on uh, News Asset, you can see the whole video, but it's pretty cool. And this, this guy, I forgot his name. He's an author uh, and he wrote a pretty good book about Bitcoin, but he talks about how this is how important it is to teach a whole generation. So what they do is they give them, they invite these kids, 55 students uh, that are in these, these specific programs. They gave them a hundred bucks of Bitcoin just to show up. Then they said, this was in December. And they said, okay, you can receive a thousand if you do this, which is we want you to hold on to Bitcoin for a specific amount of time. Also, we want you to use the Lightning Network and do three transactions. If we do those things, we'll give you a thousand bucks. And that, I thought, was pretty impressive of what to do to teach newer generation. I wish somebody was around in that time to teach me about the internet 
just how big it could be. So I think it's a forward thinking thing. And lastly, I just want to talk about Putin. Russia, United States, little, little, little problems over there. But how President Putin, I want you to notice one thing. He's now supporting the government's proposal to allow regulated Bitcoin and crypto mining. And uh, he just said, hey, this is a pretty good thing for Russia. And I think we could do some pretty great stuff. But I want you to notice one thing, which is here. The way that different organizations talk about the same thing in their headlines. So like Bloomberg comes over here and says, hey, Putin backs crypto mining despite the Bank of Russia's hard line. Got to understand Bloomberg, traditional finance type of place more so. The block is all positive. Putin pumps the brakes on Russian central banks, push to ban crypto, sees the future in mining. And then Bitcoin's like, hey, bunch of advantages. So when you take a look at the stories, make sure you, you take a look at the stories behind the stories. And that's the big thing. Because yesterday we talked about how Russia was supposedly going to ban Bitcoin and mining, but really what it was, it was from the central banks. And then this was a great article that I thought was, uh, I'll, I'll say it again because I love these articles. Yeah. So Russia should regulate crypto market, not ban it. Uh, this was a couple of days ago. And this was the, from the finance ministry, Ivan uh, Chibiskov. He contradicts the central bank, which proponent of banning it. And he said the ministry has its own ideas about how to regulate the crypto market, while a lawmaker one, went one step further, reminding the central bank of its place and states that the power to create legislation lies with parliament and not a bunch of bankers. I love that story because it just shows you just how there's always a story behind the story and get the whole information, why it's so important doing your research. And that's what's going on today. So look, you know, it was a little bit, actually it was the same amount of time, actually we do it all the time, about 20 minutes or so. But I just want to show you that keep your eye on the prize. And we know that time in the market is a bit better than timing. That's, a, that's my opinion. But uh, the things that I learned yesterday from the meetup to the things I learned about yesterday from the announcement to this America Competes, it's, uh, it just puts everything in uh, the correct order. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's get to your questions. And Q&A, whoops, Q&A. All right, Adam says DXY is way up. I don't know what that is. And Arash, I've heard this too. Putin, Putin has billions spread around the world in other people's names. I heard Vladimir Putin is like one of the richest men in the world. Some days, some days, it all, it's all, how you present. I'm actually a raging jerk to some people. Just depends on how you how it uh, how you treat me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> this is good. Putin needs to be regulated. Good luck. That guy pretty much runs a bunch of stuff. And then uh, no questions today. Great. I must have done my job. If Doge hits eight bucks, I'll pick some up. That's how my family said about Bitcoin. They said, you know, when it goes 100K, I might consider buying. Seriously, that's their that's the, their mentality. Mm. Here's a great quote from John. John said, last three years I've been in this and, and still back to where I started. If So this is the things that can happen. And it's one of those things which like, you're going to hear this this phrase, if you're new to crypto, welcome. Ah, pretty good time to pick up some deals. But just remember that if you, if it's taken this long, that there's going to be this phrase you're going to keep hearing. It's called diamond hands. And diamond hands is what you're going to hear all the time. Like you need to hold and hold and hold and hold and hold and hold. The problem with holding and holding is that if you hold for too much and too long, let me adjust this, uh, you don't ever get to take profits. And people are like, oh, you, you got you to just hold on forever because Bitcoin's going to a million. Really? Well, guess what? If you sell at a million, some people are still going to say, you're an idiot because Bitcoin's going to 10 million. You moron. And it's like I always talk about, do you want to be the richest guy in the, in the graveyard? Go right ahead. That's fine. But for me, I'd rather just take some profits out and afford some things. That is my goals. And my goals are not your goals. So at some point, John, hopefully, as time goes on, 
We can dollar cost average in, right? We buy these dips and we do okay and we just pick the points. And then if we wanna take some money out, we take some money out, we take our profits and we dollar cost average out. That is my main mission now. Those two things that I just said and the four year plan. The four year plan is whatever you're buying today, just forget about it and just wait for four years uh, because over that time, unless it goes like parabolic, then of course, you know, take some profits, but I think you'll be okay. All right. Crypto flat smack. Crypto therapy. Somebody they want to protect the banking model. I think so. Let's see. Let me go. Somebody had a good point. Take profits. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good one. MR says 27 year futures traders here. Hello, MR. Then slowly accumulating positions in what I call crypto infrastructure. Good. Layer one solutions, thing like that. We never know what is going to survive, so everything is subject to change. Yeah, that's right. Never know. Rob, could NFTs and gaming survive that bill? Maybe. Eh, the thing is, NFTs are built on something, correct? Right? So NFTs, the majority are built on Ethereum. And, or even if you use wax, uh, if you want to transact in wax, maybe the department comes down, Janet Yellen's like, you know what? That Ethereum looks kind of suspicious. I think we should shut all those down. And it, it's not going to be like the whole chain, but they could shut you down. And that's the big thing. Ugh, diamond hands. And then uh, Luigi says, I, I think we are facing a NASDAQ and crypto the same we face in March 2020. What do you think? Well, I remember in 2020, there was this little thing called COVID that came about and it crashed everything. I remember when Ethereum went down to like 100, 200 bucks. And I think Bitcoin went down to like $3,000. Correct me in the comments section. So do I see that kind of black swan event happening? You never know. You never know. And that's why it's important. Just like I said, take profits and have and diversify a little bit, you know? Maybe like a little real estate here and there. Or maybe some other things that you can get into. Um, maybe stocks. Maybe gold and silver. I own gold and silver. I don't see any problem with it. I don't know why gold and silver people just can't uh, buy both. It doesn't make any sense to me. So I think at the same time, I think it's a little bit different now. But uh, again, nobody knows. What do you think about StormX? I like StormX. I like Simon Yu, CEO over there. Been around for a long time. And I like the platform I actually buy stuff and get discounts. I don't see a problem with it whatsoever. And, and someone just said, some, I can't find the comment, but it says, and this will be the third question. What about regular videos? Uh, see, regular videos, they work out pretty well. I like doing the live ones because I don't have to record, then edit, then upload, then wait then go through the rigmarole. And this is just a little bit faster. So I like this format. And then you can ask me questions. I, I like it uh, better. You can always come back. I'm, I, as of the three videos ago, I started to do timestamps. So if you come back, I'll have all the timestamps for you too. If you don't want to watch the whole thing. And <laughs> this is a great question. Alex says, how does America compete with what they're proposing? They're trying to compete on a global scale. And one of those things that they talked about, this whole provision, uh, as far as like dealing with uh, the illicit activity and money laundering, was specifically aimed at China and the different problems that are going on with China. Here's the thing. If you want to compete, if America wants to compete, they need to throw that out because that's not going to do anything good for us. And they really should just embrace crypto and say, okay, we want crypto here just like we wanted the internet here. And it worked out pretty dang well for us uh, back in the early 90s or mid to late 90s, early 2000s, as we grew a bunch of massive companies like a Google, like a Facebook, like everything else that's been in Silicon Valley. And you can just say like this, um, that's how America competes. Now, if you want to regulate it, sure, go right ahead. If you want to call it a security, I don't care. Just make up your mind because as time goes on, all these different companies that are here that are... Uh, doing quite well, uh, they're going to just leave a vacuum and leave because America is what it is. They did a great job with allowing miners in Texas. Thank you, Texas, my great state. But they're doing a real bad job in that other stuff. Uh, fourth question, have you heard of Celsius X, the DeFi number Celsius? Yes, I have. Uh, 
Actually, I talked to the, the folks over there at Celsius and I'll probably be doing some videos about it because it looks pretty promising what they're doing. So stay tuned. Uh, okay. And last question. Investing in the GameFi. Yeah, uh, there's two. Uh, Gensukishi, which is the one I talked about yesterday. Again, they got a platform, Elemental Knights, that already has a base of users. They've been around for like seven, eight years. They already have the app on iOS. They already have it on Android. They already have it on PS4 or 5, and then also on Nintendo Switch. So they're, they're bringing that over into the metaverse. So Gensukishi probably have a good one. Also Everdome. Potentially could be a big one. They've tarred up with Meta Hero, and uh, those are the two that I like. Do your own research. Risky stuff, not investment advice. And <laughs> I don't like the live stream better. It's double the length and half the content. No one to tell you, man. So if it doesn't work out for you, then uh, just I don't know what to tell you because, like, I think we do the same amount of content. It's just uh, roughly about the same amount of time. Because we get done around 20 minutes and that's it. Now the, the Q&A takes a little bit longer, which we're going to stop right now. But it's all what you want, right? When I'm walking the dogs in the morning, like I could use a, an hour long session listening to something instead of just a 10 minute snippet. That's me. Everybody's different, but that's it. So look, uh, that's it for today. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. That's all we have. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios.